Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I love all my boas, but there's a handful of animals that just seem to be really popular among the viewers of the Brian Boas YouTube channel. So today I'm going to take out some of my most popular boas based on your comments, give you an update on their status, and say a little bit about my future plans for these amazing animals. If you're new to locality boas, this will give you a really good cross-section of the different types of locality boas available, all the great diversity in these animals, as well as some ideas about my future breeding plan, so be sure to stay tuned. The logical animal to start with is this guy. This guy is actually, seems to be probably my most popular boa based on all the comments I get on him. Definitely one of my favorite animals, certainly in my you know, probably top five favorite animals I have in my collection right now. And this guy is an anorithristic Paraguana Peninsula Boa uh, from Venezuela, and it's a really special animal. So these are a type of locality boa that's uh, indigenous to a small peninsula in northwestern Venezuela. And what makes this guy even more special is that this guy has a naturally occurring anorithristic variant lacking the red and yellow pigment. So he's got this beautiful silvery gray coloration. This guy is definitely the most beautiful looking anorithristic bow I've ever seen or pretty much any anorithristic animal for that matter. I just love the pattern on these uh, Paraguana Peninsula boas. It's also great that this guy is a dwarf. He's pretty much full size. This guy's about five years old and he's you know maybe four four and a half feet long and just a really cool boa one of my favorite boas to handle he's really chill and mellow but he's also quite intelligent and interactive so i always enjoy taking this guy out and handling him just a great great animal this guy as i mentioned i'll get a lot of comments from him from the viewers He's kind of an unofficial uh, mascot of the Brian Boas, or maybe he's an official mascot of the Brian Boas YouTube channel, since I take him out so much. And, you know, he really represents what I'm working towards in my breeding. Um, although I didn't breed this guy, this guy I was bred by Vin Russo. Um, and I got him from a pretty a good friend of mine who unfortunately got out of Boas. You know, fortunately for me, since I was able to acquire this guy. But just a really, really beautiful animal. This guy I'm hoping to pair up next year. I have a female anorithristic uh, Paraguana Peninsula Boa, so fingers crossed that I'll get some babies. And uh, really would make me very happy to produce these animals as you really don't see them very often. And you know, a lot of people want these. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot, not a lot to go around. And so one thing I wanted to mention about this guy, as you may know, I don't name most of my boas, you know, with a pet name. You know, I just basically name them with a number and an, an identity. For example, this guy is Paraguana male number two. He's my second male Paraguana Peninsula boa. A few of them I do have pet names. I think it might be cool if this guy is going to be the mascot of the channel. Why don't you suggest the name that you think would be appropriate appropriate for him? Please, you know, comment below what you would like to name this guy. And if I like one or more of the names, I may end up taking it or maybe we'll put it up to a vote uh, for the viewers in a poll. So type your name suggestions below and, let, you know, we'll see how what we get from that. might be kind of interesting. So, you know, definitely one of my favorites and most popular boas, my anorithristic Paraguana Peninsula boa. Another really popular boa is one of my last acquisitions. This is a Barranquilla uh, Columbia female boa. And I got a trio of these that was produced by my good friend Michael Beach in 2020. So this girl is now a year old. Um, they're all really stunning animals. This particular female really seems to stand out. I just love her pattern and contrast. Just an amazingly beautiful animal. And as I mentioned, I got this is the last locality type of boa I've gotten and probably will be the last to add to the collection since I'm pretty much at capacity. But I just love these Barranquilla Columbia boas. They just have so many pluses of red tail boas without a lot of the negatives. And, you know, I want to say that technically these are not true red tail boas. They're not boa constrictor constrictor, although some people consider them to be kind of an intermediate between imperator and constrictor. Um, but they have a lot of the pluses of boa constrictor constrictor beautiful high contrast you know nice reddish tail 
you know, just a great looking animal. The, the contrast is just, the colors just really pop. But they have a lot of advantages because they tend to be easier to keep. They're, you know, more mellow and laid back and enjoyable to handle. Um, I just love these branchia boas. And this one, as I mentioned, she's now a year old. Um, you know, she's probably about, I don't know, three, three and a half feet, you know, growing slowly. Uh, the adults don't really get all that big. You know, I think uh, Michael's breeders are like four or five feet long, you know, so they're just not a huge snake, but great animal. And definitely has become one of my favorite locality boas in the relatively short time I've been keeping these animals. But I look forward to the future and hopefully have some litters of these branchia boas maybe in, you know, three to four years time. I had to get out an Argentine boa for my next uh, pop, most popular boa. And as I said before, these are one of my all-time favorite locality boas. Based on all your comments, you guys love them too. And of course, there's a lot to recommend these. I'm not going to go through everything since I've covered this a lot in, you know, previous videos. This is a six-year-old female. She was born here back in 2015. I had a small litter. Um, she's pretty much full size i mean she's probably i don't know six and a half seven feet she'll get a little bit bigger um, but definitely a breeding size animal uh, my males my male argentines are not as old you know so i'm waiting on them i probably would have set her up this year if i had a suitable male but the males were still a little too young but i'm hoping uh, next year will be my year for argentines and i'll be able to set up this girl with a suitable male and you know hopefully produce some of these amazing animals um, this particular one is kind of a really rich uh, dark brown color with kind of a caramel -y and you know kind of off-white markings but I love how her saddles are kind of broken up and she's also another cool feature she's got kind of the lighter snout so a lot of you know cool looks to this Argentine boa um, just a really enjoyable animal to handle. These guys seem to be kind of intelligent, you know, as far as boas go. And uh, really, you know, both a joy to handle and as well as to look at. So Argentine boas are definitely deserve their popularity uh, in the world of boa collecting today. Another amazing locality boa from the more southerly range of boa constrictor close to the Argentine boa is the Bolivian boa, boa constrictor amorali. So these guys come from uh, Bolivia, southern Brazil, uh, Argentina, and Paraguay. Um, and personality-wise, they're not that much different from the Argentine boas. They seem to be more interactive and more intelligent than some of the other types of boas. You know, they're not as likely to try to get away and they interact more with the keeper. Um, so this guy is a five-year-old male, and this guy is from a bloodline known as the Orange Crush bloodline that was uh, first produced by Joe Terry back in the 80s, and I was really fortunate to pick up this pair a few years ago. Um, I have a female as well. The male is a little bit more orange, just a really gorgeous animal. Um, these guys will probably be ready to pair up next year, so I'll probably plan on breeding them, hopefully for the first time next year, you know, fingers crossed. But, you know, another great animal. And so, of course, the name of this boa is the short tail boa. And so you can see, looking at his tail, it has relatively few tail saddles. You know, they typically have around three or four tail saddles. You know, definitely fewer tail saddles than a true red tail. Although there are some South Brazilian uh, Amarali that are said to hybridize with the true red tails. In fact, some of them have peak saddles and they have kind of a more reddish tail. And, you know, people think about boa constrictor constrictor, boa constrictor Amarali as being two discrete entities. But in the wild, you know, a lot of boa constrictor ranges overlap. And really you have this continuous range of variation uh, in many places, you know, with the boa constrictor constrictor in the you know, more northern part of Brazil, Amarali in the more southern part. But of course the Amarali from southern Brazil are going to have more in common with the boa constrictor constrictor from Brazil than the Amarali from you know, more southerly locations. Most of them supposedly come from Bolivia like this one. You know, but I've also heard people say, well that's not really true. 
they're from southern Brazil. Unfortunately, it can be really difficult to know for sure where a boa constrictor originated in the wild. Although I'm working on a video in the, you know, to be released in the not too distant future where I discuss some, you know, techniques for this. And so, um, you know, I think we should just be fortunate that we have these great animals and we have such a diversity of different boa constrictors and we should really try to preserve this diversity as best we can in our captive propagation. And, you know, of course, never, we would never want to try to crossbreed two different types of locality boa. We want to keep these uh, Bolivian amaralli only paired with other uh, Bolivian amaralli. Speaking of boas from Brazil, this next animal is a North Brazilian female, and this is another really popular boa of mine, and it's not hard to see why looking at her appearance. Uh, but these North Brazilian boas are characterized by their really irregular markings. They have kind of this uh, slightly aberrant but peat saddles and lots of background markings, uh, splotches and freckles and really an overall a really dirty look and I really like this look in boa constrictors. And this female was uh, produced by uh, Mike Weitzman from Basically Boas. This is a 2016 female. Um, I believe it was a um, cross of uh, Bissett, Dyer, Evans and rent Renfro bloodlines. So a lot of great bloodlines in this animal. This particular animal I really like because she's got the really dirty look you know, synonymous with northern Brazilian boas, but she's also got this beautiful long red tail. And I have another pair of north Brazilian boas. They have much shorter tails. They're darker, but I like how this one has, you know, retained that beautiful red tail. Um, this, you know, a preference of mine. I actually paired this one up this year. Unfortunately, it didn't take. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to have any north Brazilian boas this year, but I'll pair her up next year with the same male. Um, you know, better luck next year. Sometimes it takes a second try before you can breed a boa for the first time. So we'll see how it goes. But just a beautiful example of the North Brazilian true red tail boa. Another locality boa that's gotten really popular in the last few years and has a lot of really dedicated keepers is the long tail boa, boa constrictor longicata. I have a small group of these beautiful animals. Um, actually, my other female is currently gravid, so hopefully I'll have some babies on the ground in a few weeks. This particular female is a five-year-old, um, probably my favorite Longicata. Just gorgeous, gorgeous markings. I mean, the head markings are just so beautiful. And, you know, she's just really, really developed nicely. These animals start off relatively light, but then they get darker and darker, and they assume this really dark markings as adults, um, almost as dark as an Argentine boa. Definitely one of the darkest types of locality boas. And I just love the contrast on this animal. So this female is you know, ready to breed and I'll plan, plan on pairing her up for next year. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed and you know, we'll have to see. My other female is also quite gorgeous looking. And I expect her to hopefully drop her babies probably by the end of the month. So. I'll keep you guys posted on these Longicata boas. Here's a true red tail. I get a lot of comments from you guys about, you know, definitely one of my favorites. This is a Guiana true red tail. This male uh, is from the Eckert or one of, one of Mike Eckert's bloodlines. This guy is about 10 years old. He's a mature male. Uh, you can see how, the, how he really embodies what I was talking about earlier, the derby look. He's just got lots of background markings and smudges. And what I like about this guy is he doesn't look like a typical Guiana boa. You know, the Guiana and Suriname are typically, a lot of people consider them the same thing. But this guy definitely looks different from my Suriname boas. You know, more of a, a maroonish, purplish, brownish background color. You can see his tail isn't really bright. It's kind of got this dark maroonish reddish brown tail, but you know, definitely a unique look and not like the, you know, a Suriname boa. Uh, you can see he also has these really cool head markings, a lot of markings on his head, and you can see all of the smudges and how dirty his belly is. Just really the wild look that really, you know, excites me. I really love this wild look in a true red tail. Uh, so this guy was paired up with my female for quite a while. I'm not sure if she's gravid. They actually produced two litters previously, you know, so I was hoping to get another litter this year. 
not exactly sure. You know, the female's quite large, so it's kind of hard to tell in such a big boa if she's gravid or not. We'll just have to see. She may be gravid. If she is gravid, I don't expect babies until probably like September or even later. So it's going to be a late litter, but we'll just have to see. But cool, dirty looking Guiana uh, red tail boa. I had to get out one of my dwarf boas, and you know, one of my most popular is this male crawl key boa. This guy is an adult, he's about uh, eight years old, proven breeder. Um, you can see he's maybe four feet long. Just a really cool locality boa for someone that wants the full boa constrictor experience and a nice portable pint size package. Just beautiful looking, these are kind of a naturally occurring anarchistic with reduced red and uh, yellow pigment. They have this beautiful silvery gray coloration. They also, a lot of them have this really dirty look. You can see this guy has some striping. His, you know, posterior, maybe quarter or so is striped towards the tail. Um, this is a really cool look overall. I like handling this guy. He's also, you know, quite mellow and chill to handle. Although today he's kind of a little more active than normal. I don't know if the snakes are picking up on something. Um, the, the Guiana I just had out was kind of acting a little hyper as well. Sometimes they just get a little antsy in front of the camera. But overall, real nice boa. This guy produced a litter last year, and I'm planning on pairing him up again next year, fingers crossed, for some beautiful crawl key dwarf boas in 2022. My last snake to share with you today, I had to get out a Suriname red tail since I have more Surinams than any other type of boa in my collection. And this is definitely an amazing animal. This is a Prometheus bloodline born here in 2016. This guy just has it all as far as what I'm looking for in a Suriname red tail boa. So you can see he's got these beautiful peaked symmetrical saddles. He's got this kind of dirtyish background color. You know, definitely not a clean boa. I really don't like when people breed them to be too clean. He's got lots of pinkish and reddish coloration in the sides. This really light head with this nice pointy snout. And then of course, most importantly, he's got this super long bright red tail, just like his father. So great animal. Um, I'm actually expecting a litter from this bloodline, the first, uh, second generation litter. Actually, this guy wasn't the sire of that litter. His brother was, and I was going to show you his brother, but his brother's in shed, so I grabbed him instead. His brother's also a very beautiful animal that I've had in many of my videos before. And so hopefully we should have some second generation Prometheus babies on the ground sometime in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of some of the most popular boas in my collection. Gave you a taste of the diversity of these amazing locality boas. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.